I think one thing that the deregulation does is probably strengthen the the financial viability of radio as an industry. And if that financial viability is strengthened, then the future is a little more secure and broadcasters can do a better job of serving the general public. In some cases, uh, it, it's been a salvation of some radio stations uh, that, that they need the help from others they need. It. The, in some cases, uh, it's made for a more efficient, effective operation. In every market where Duopoly has taken over, the rates have firmed and the revenues have grown. I got interested in uh, putting together a study when I was talking with people, mostly clients that, that I deal with, about their experience in Duopoly. And one of the things I found is they all have learned something in a very quick order. We have found absolutely unequivocally that it is better to have individual sales units representing each one of your properties. Here in Boston, we have four distinct local sales staffs all out every day pitching their own unique product. And we think at the end of the day, that will increase our shares overall in the whole Boston picture. We found that uh, it, it is absolutely mandatory to operate them as separately, thereby the costs are not saved there. We're looking that uh, incrementally we will grow revenue and the profitability of the radio stations from the growth in revenue, not the, uh, uh, the minute savings that you can ultimately grind out. Certainly savings that were forecast through Duopoly are there for the existing radio stations. However, being a long-time salesperson, I don't think I have ever seen anybody save themselves rich. Certainly, we all want to be good business people. Certainly, there are savings we can take advantage of. But like the street salesperson will always tell you, sooner or later, somebody's got to sell something. The savings has been fine as expected. I don't think it was a disappointment to too many people. I think the ones who are really making a lot more profit are doing it aggressively. However, the surprise, I think, was that when you compare those that are making a lot more profit with those that are making a little more profit. The big item is the revenue increase. Each one of the radio stations has their own unique position within the marketplace from a programming standpoint. From a sales perspective, each one of them brings a slightly different characteristic in the demographic. The Eagle is young male. Nix is older and female. WEEI is middle to older aged male dominant. And WRKO adults 35 and over. With the four properties plus our sports unit, you bring a lot to the table in a one-stop shopping for the uh, advertising community of Boston. We look at a situation in the market as, as many broadcasters do. Each one is different and for us the uh, strategy of four uh, different radio formats that do uh, support each other demographically has been, I think, the most expedient way for us to, to work within the environment that is sort of given us in Denver. From day one, we've never seen Duopoly as a defense mechanism. We've seen it as an offensive opportunity to increase our reach and penetration into the advertising marketplace. Uh, I don't think we would ever do any type of Duopoly deal purely on a defensive basis. Uh, what we have done is we have gone into like programming and like formats as we did in Kansas City and tried to control a segment of the audience and a format uh, uh, demographic. Those who are doing defensive warfare are doing it with a very solid purpose in mind and you know I guess they're sleeping well at night you know because if they have two country stations they probably figure they won't get a third or if a third one came in it won't last for long they can starve it out or if they have classic rock and some form of today's rock they're guarding the castle. Well, I think the people part of Duopoly is the most difficult yet the most rewarding. You have, in many cases, complete competitors who have been at each other's throats for years, now swarm together in one building, one, pro one company, all with a united front in theory, but in many ways still competing with each other. You assume because you're in the market and you have, in the case of KYGO, a very successful radio station, that they know all about you, they understand the kind of commitment you have to people to technology, to, to resources, and what you quickly find out, they don't. Our belief in American radio systems in approaching duopoly is that our local management is the key to the whole operation. In effect, each one of our general managers, and there's one per market, generally speaking, becomes almost a mini CEO within our organization for that city, for that operation. You can get through the technical issues, you can get through the issues of, a, of an asset sale, all of those things are, 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 are pretty doable. The, the, the critical one, I think, remains people and, and uh, trying to get them on the same page with you as quickly as possible. We all own radio licenses. We all have tall towers. We all have electrified signals. 
But at the end of the day, the people are our most important assets. I can only speak from one commissioner's standpoint. I speak for myself, and I think the others would feel pretty much this way. The rules have just uh, have been revised and upgraded uh, in September. On September 16th, you went to uh, 20 uh, radio stations, and then three more if there's a, a minority ownership. So we don't plan to revisit it right away. That would be up to Congress. I'm very uh, thrilled to see that the National Association of Broadcasters and its board of directors uh, and the group head fly-in uh, that was held recently in Washington came out in favor of backing Senator Pressler's proposals. I think if the senator is willing to step up to the plate on behalf of broadcasters as he has, I think it would be irresponsible not to step behind him as an industry and back him. So I'm very excited about the possibility of the deregulation that Senator Pressler is seeking for all of us. Eventually, I think uh, Senator Pressler may have a, a, a good idea. It might be just a little bit premature now. We're going to have a multi-channel world there. You're going to have uh, direct broadcast from satellites. And eventually, I think it's a matter of uh, uh, getting rid of the rules. It is unfair that somebody could go tomorrow into direct satellite broadcasting and immediately be able to talk to multiple stations in multiple markets across the United States, yet the same FCC tells us as an industry that we can own two AMs and two FMs in a limited number of markets. It doesn't make any sense. We are firm believers in raising the ownership limits and let the marketplace take care of itself. There is this danger, and that is that uh, some of the large dominant players will dominate a market. If you're going to get rid of the rules completely, and maybe Senator Pressler had this in mind, is have a local cap so you don't run into antitrust problems. Otherwise, uh, if, if you did do away with the rules, then the only thing governing would be an antitrust uh, law that you'd have to comply with. So I, I, I'd say uh, uh, I like his idea, his approach is right, whether it's premature or whether he should consider a, some kind of a, uh, a local cap. The government, in all their wisdom, created more of us than probably bureaucratic agencies in Washington. And we know how to fight on the street, and we know how to live in a very competitive, uh, multi-populated world. So the competition's there. All we want to do is control more signals, be able to do a better job with more reach and frequency for our clients. The best example of duopolization, I feel, in a major market today is the example of Buffalo, New York, 39th, 40th market metro in the United States. Fifteen months ago, there wasn't a single duopoly in that marketplace. It was like a Mexican standoff. Who was going to buy? Who was going to sell? Now, 15 months later, the entire marketplace is paired up, consolidated. And if you take a look at the fall book and the latest Hungerfords, you have roughly 76% of all the audience shares are tied up in duopoly. But more importantly, 95% of the revenues in that marketplace are coming out of one of the duopoly operations. There's only one independent left, WBLK specifically, an independent urban station. I ask you, and I ask my fellow broadcasters, what's the value of that radio station today versus 15 months ago? I am very concerned that we as an industry are not grasping what is taking place. That we have not totally understood that there is going to be major change and that it is going to change at a very, very rapid rate. If you haven't bought into duopoly, you better get on it right away because you too could end up with a buffalo and be on the outside looking in as that single independent station is today. He who hesitates is going to lose in duopoly in the future.